Hi, welcome back to another tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how you can make your own firecrackers in celebration with the Chinese New Year. We'll be doing some modeling, using some modifiers, adding some lighting and finishing it off with some materials and shader nodes. This video is part of a giveaway that I'm hosting in collaboration with XP-Pen. Follow this tutorial, post it on your Instagram and you will have a chance to win a Deco Pro MW XP-Pen tablet. All the information you need to join is in the description down below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and if you have any obstacles or challenges in Blender, let me know in the comment section. I'm excited, so let's dive right in. We'll start off by creating the rope. So we'll press Shift A, Curve and add a path. Press 1 on your numpad or R, Y and 90 to rotate it. And then now we'll tap to go into edit mode and then here we'll create our curve. So we'll press E and Y to extrude it out. And then extrude it once again and then G and Z move it down a tiny bit and then E and Z to extrude it down a bit again and then we can play around a bit with the shape there and then I want this end to move a bit that way give it a slight curve to that side and G and Z maybe move it up maybe even move all of these there yeah, I think that looks nice. Okay, and then for our rope, we'll uh, add a circle. So press Shift A, Mesh, and add a circle. And then we can press G X four to move it to the side. Press uh, seven on your numpad to go into top view or go through your view menu. Press Tab to go into edit mode. And then while in edit mode, select all your verts and then press Shift D X a one. Then press Shift D Y one, and then G X 0.5 minus. There we go. And then now we want to select all the verts on the inside. So that's all of these. And then we'll press X and V. And then now select these two here. Press M and merge at center. And do that for the others as well. Tap to go outside of edit mode and then right click set origin to geometry. And then now we'll go into our modifiers tab, add a modifier, and we'll add a screw. And then we can increase the screw to maybe like 10 meters. And then we'll press Ctrl 2 to add a subdivision modifier. Press Shift S selection to cursor. And then press S and we'll scale it down a whole bit. Something like that maybe. And then add a curve modifier. And then we'll select our curve object like that. And then we can increase our iterations. And now we need to deform axis to minus X. And then we can just increase that so it fills up our curve. And then we'll let it be for now. And then we'll decrease it later. Now we'll uh, add a small box, so press Shift A, Mesh and add a circle. And then decrease the vertices to 6. Press Tab to go into edit mode, F to fill, E to extrude it up. Maybe something like that. And then I to inset, E to extrude it up, I to inset, and then E to extrude it in. And then we'll add a bevel modifier, increase the segments to 4 and then the amount to 0 0.015. Right click and shade auto smooth. Now you need to go into edit, preferences, add-ons and search for extra objects and make sure that both of these are selected. Then we can go press shift A, mash, extras and we'll add a simple star. Press G and Z to move that up and then scale it down. Press 1 to go into front view or go press tilde key to open your view menu. And then we'll put it there. Then shift click that object, press Ctrl L and P to link the modifiers and then right click shit out those move. Now with both of these selected, we'll go into right view, tab to go into edit mode and then we'll scale it down. Maybe a bit up there. And then now we can rotate it and then I'm going to place it there. 
and then now I'm going to go and decrease our screw just a tiny bit maybe like seven iterations and then I'm going to go and apply it and I'll apply the curve as well I'll leave the subdivision as is and then select the rope go into edit mode press 2 to go into edge select press alt and select this loop here press shift s and select cursor to select it leave edit mode and then press shift a mesh and add a circle we'll change the vertices back to the 32 tab to go into edit mode and then we'll scale that down and then with g and z we'll move it up just a tiny bit and then we'll press f to fill e and we'll extrude it down and then we'll press i to inset and then we can press E and extrude it. And then S to scale. And then press Ctrl B. And we'll give it a nice round end like that. And then hold Shift and Alt. And then select these two edges. And then press Ctrl B. And give those a bevel as well. And you can right click, shade out as move. And press Ctrl 2 to add a subdivision modifier. Back into edit mode, press Ctrl R, add a loop cut, and move it up there we go and then from right view maybe you want to scale it up a tiny bit maybe you want to move it up there i think that looks uh, pretty good okay then for the firecrackers press shift a mesh and add a cylinder press, scale it down we'll move it a bit towards there and then we'll scale it up a tiny bit scale it up in the z-axis and then maybe a tiny bit more there we go press ctrl r add a loop cut in the middle and press ctrl b to bevel it and use your scroll wheel to just have two bevels make it something like that and then with shift and alt select just these two loops and press ctrl b and bevel those and then with these selected press alt e f and extrude your faces and then you can shift click select that object ctrl l and p to edit the same um, modifiers go back into edit mode press 3 to go into face select select this and the bottom face press i win set alt e f and we'll extrude that in and then right click shade out those move and then go into edit mode press a to select all and then press g and z and we'll move it down so our origin point is outside a bit on uh, above it because now when we rotate it, it rotates around that point. And now we can basically press Shift C to reset our 3D cursor to the middle. And we'll select this one. Shift S, selection to cursor. So it's exactly in the same. And then we can press R to rotate it. And then move that up. And then G and Y to move it to the side a bit. R and Z. And then, yeah, I think that placement looks pretty nice. And then with Alt D, we'll make a duplicate and then I'll press Z and then Shift R to redo that. And then if I look from the left, I can kind of like position them a bit more there. Position that one a bit more there. You can add some extra rotations. I think that looks uh, pretty nice. Now I'll select the top one, add a modifier and we'll add a mirror and then we'll select the rope and then I'll shift click these and then shift click that one last control L and P there we go now I'll click the rope because we need to close this go into edit mode go into edge select by pressing 2 hold alt select this loop press F to fill and then press control B to bevel it and increase your bevels a bit there we go Okay, that looks uh, pretty cool. Then we'll start adding our camera. So um, go into front view, and then we'll we can delete our curve. And we'll press Shift A, and we'll add a camera. And then press G Y five minus, and then go press zero on your numpad, or go for your view menu to go into camera view. And then we'll change our resolution to 1920 by 1920. 
and then we can select the firecrackers and then pressing R twice we can rotate them a tiny bit and I think this is a pretty cool angle and then I can select my camera and then press G and Z twice to move it a tiny bit closer there we go then we'll press shift a mesh add a plane r press r x 90 to rotate it and press g and y move it back back in the camera view press tab to go into edit mode and then scale it up so it covers your background okay then for the lighting press z and go into rendered view and then we'll press shift a light and add an area light press r x 90 minus to rotate it and then you can press G, Y, 3, move it behind our object. And then we can go into the light settings and then we'll increase the size so it covers the camera. And then we'll make the power maybe 100, make it 150. It gets a nice backlight. Press Shift A, light and add another area light. Press G and Z, move it up. Press period to open your pivot point menu, change your pivot point to 3D cursor, press RX 60 and then RZ maybe 30 minus. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. And then we'll change the shape to disc, power to 80 and then we'll see maybe the power to 100. There we go. And then press shift D, RZ 120. And then we can press R and X twice and maybe shine a tiny bit more from the side. I'm going to move this one back a bit. So select it, press G and then Z twice and you can move it back just a tiny bit. Okay. And then we'll press Shift A, a light, add another area light. Press R, X, 90 to rotate it. And then press G and Y and you can move it to the background. We'll change the shape to disc, size to 2. And then we can change the power to 500. Now let's see how that looks for our background. Yeah, that looks like a nice uh, background. Maybe we can even move them a bit closer. There we go. Okay, then we'll start adding some materials and we can always adjust our lighting later on. And we'll start with our background. So select the background, go to the material tab, add a new material, we'll call it background, and then change the base color to be FFA68C. And then for the rope, add a new material, call it rope. Change the base color to E79F6B. And then we'll give this a nice red color. So we'll call that a red with a base color of E7532F. And then we're going to decrease our roughness to 0.35. And then we can select all the firecrackers as well. Press Ctrl L and then M to link the materials. Select the star, we'll give that a gold material. So change the base color to E79B41. Change metallic to 1 and then we'll change the roughness to 0.4. Like that. And then I want this ring to be gold as well. So select this object, go into edit mode, press 3 to be in face select, alt click to select this top loop, and then go to select, select more or less, and select more, and then in your material tab, press add material slot, and then press gold, and then click assign. There we go. And then we'll select this first firecracker, and then with shift and alt, select these two loops, go to select, select more or less, select more, and then add a new material slot, change it to gold, and then assign. There we go. I think that looks pretty neat. Now we'll just make this handle look like wood. So select the handle, go to shading, I'm going to view camera. Maybe we can zoom in on it a tiny bit so we can see a bit better. And then we'll add a new material, we'll call it wood. And then I want you to go to edit, preferences, add-ons, and search for node wrangler and activate node wrangler. And then here we'll press shift A, search 
and we'll add a Musgrave texture and press Ctrl T to add a mapping in the texture coordinate press Shift A search and add a noise texture and Shift A search add a color ramp select these two connect these to each other and add it to the base color and then here you can see something that will be our um, wood texture we can change the scale a tiny bit and then the scale of that we'll decrease it a tiny bit and then maybe on the set axis there we go and that has kind of like a wood feel to it I'll change the colors to my color in my color ramp I'll change the dark color to 5a3 and b2f and then the light color I will change to c48760 and then I'm going to move this a tiny bit to the left as well and then I'm going to decrease the roughness to like 0.3 as well because I think that will look pretty good go into camera view go into rendered view yeah that looks pretty neat um, I'll go back to a layout tab go into the world settings change the color to 5e3 430 and then now we're going to play a tiny bit more with the lighting I'm going to move that up just a tiny bit press rx twice there we go and then maybe make it a tiny bit stronger like 120 and maybe give it a slight ready orangey feel and I'm going to do the same to my background lighting here there just just a very slight color to it I think gives it a very nice look okay and then we can leave you can change your render engine to cycles if you think it looks better I'm uh, I'm going to leave it in Eevee and then I'm just going to activate ambient occlusion screen space reflections go to color management and change my look to a medium high contrast and there we go all we have to do is render thanks for joining me I hope you had a good time creating your firecrackers if you want to learn more be sure to check out the other tutorials on my channel if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up and if you have any obstacles or challenges in blender let me know in the comment section don't forget to tag me and xp pen when you upload your masterpiece to instagram to be sure you're part of the giveaway make sure you read all the rules in the description down below thank you so much for watching and i'll catch you in the next video see you soon